You're welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Maths channel. I'm now answering a question from the Solomon collection. Solomon B from the Pure Mathematics P3 International A level at Excel. Um, and this is a question that I've included in one of my end of topic worksheets in P3 from differentiation, um, differentiation worksheet one, question number 11 and question six from this Solomon B paper. Now, this question here is about differentiation, but a lot of it is also to do with exponentials and logarithms. So first of all, the first part of the question is more related to functions, and it says state the range of the function f. So f of x equals e to the power of 3x plus 1 minus 2, where x is an element of all real numbers. State the range of f. So we've got to think about, when you're thinking about the range of a function, you've got to think about what the function looks like when you sketch it. So if I was to sketch this function, it would look something like this. This is my y-axis, this is my x-axis, sorry, this is my x-axis, the y-axis, so here's the y-axis here, this is the x-axis. Now, if I had y equals e to the power of x, what that would look like, that would have the shape like something like exponential function going through one on the y-axis. It would have that kind of shape. It would go through one on the y-axis. Okay. And there would be an asymptote, an asymptote, a point below which it never goes, which will be the x-axis itself, so y equals zero. That's the asymptote. That's what the graph of um, y equals e to the power of x would look like. Now, what we have is a transformation of this graph. Okay, first of all, what's happened is it's been translated one unit to the right. No, sorry, to the left. Okay, so it's first translated one unit to the left. So the whole thing goes one unit to the left. Okay, and secondly, it's been stretched by a factor of three, uh, by of a third, sorry, um, horizontally, by a factor of a third. So the whole thing get, kind of gets more squashed up. I mean, you can kind of like make it a bit more squashed up but where it, where it went through the x-axis wouldn't change so it gets a bit more squashed up and then what happens it goes down by two units so the only thing that affects its range is the fact that it's gone down by two units so it's gone down by two units that's what affects its range so now its range is from this region which i'll just i'll just draw some uh one second, let me get my... It's from this region upwards. Okay, so it's from here. That's the range going up. Whatever. So the lowest it gets to now is, this is going to be, it was y equals zero. Now it becomes y equals negative two because the whole thing has gone down by two units. So y equals negative two is a new... Um, asymptote y equals negative two so the range of this so it gets closer and closer to negative two without ever touching it all right and it cuts the x and y axis like this so it cuts the y axis somewhere here and the x axis somewhere here no, it's not it's not one we have to, in fact we have to find that as you see in part part b it says find the coordinates of p where it crosses the y axis so this is p and this is going to be q where it crosses the x axis right because we can see it cuts about certain points we have to find but that's not part a part is just the range part a is just the range of f so the range of f is y is greater than negative two it never gets to negative two it gets closer and closer to it but it goes above it and goes on forever up this way all right so it never actually reaches x y equals negative two because that is the asymptote so we got to try to picture what the graph looks like in order to for, for us to give the range so this question could be answered almost immediately once you realize that these only affect the horizontal translation transformations but this is what affects the vertical transformation so if you understand that y equals e to the power of 3x you know it has an asymptote at y equals zero then we know that this will have an asymptote at y equals minus two and these won't affect the vertical asymptote okay so that's what we realized so you could also you could write this answer down without even showing any steps without drawing any graphs I'm just doing that for your, so you can picture what I'm, what, what's going on, that's all. In a real exam, you wouldn't have to draw that at all. Okay, because it just says state, and there's only one mark, all right? So you could just write the answer down and get the full marks of the question, of course. Now, for part B, it says the curve f of x meets the y-axis at the point P, 
as we've kind of noted earlier, and the x-axis of the point Q, find the exact coordinates of P and Q. So we need the equation of the curve, which is f of x or y equals e to the power of 3x plus 1 take away 2. All right, so that is the equation of the curve just written as y equals. That's fine. Now, something crosses the y-axis. Something hits the y-axis when x equals 0. So what we have to do is replace the x with 0. So you have y equals e to the power of 3 times 0 plus 1, which is 1, minus 2. So we can say that um, the coordinates of p are going to be 0 and e minus 2. We don't have to put to the power of 1. That's fine. That's the exact coordinates of p. p. We, don't have, we don't write it in decimal form because we know that e is 2.81 something. So here we're going to leave it in its exact form. And it something crosses the x-axis when y equals 0. Okay, so we're going to have to find what, what you know y equals 0 in this equation. So you have 0 equals e to the power of 3x minus, uh, plus 1, sorry, minus 2. Therefore, you can say e to the power of 3x plus 1 is equal to 2. Just rearranging that. Now we're going to take the lin of both sides, okay, to solve this because the x is trapped in the in the power of this e so we need to take the lin to the base of the the number to which the power is raised that we want to solve for so we're going to take lin of both sides in which case this side will become 3x plus 1 and this will become lin 2 so now we can say 3x is equal to lin 2 minus 1 so x is equal to lin 2 minus 1 over 3 so I can write down the x coordinate. Let me just make a bit of space here. I can write the x coordinate, therefore, of um, I mean the coordinates of q are therefore going to be um, lin two minus one over three and zero. So those are the coordinates of p in exact form, and the coordinates of q also in exact form. Okay, so there's the answer to part b. And now for part C, it says show that the tangent to the curve at P, and we know the point P has the coordinates um, 0, E minus 2, 0, E minus 2, okay, has this equation, okay, Y equals 3E, X plus E minus 2. So to find the, the equation of a tangent, a tangent is like a straight line, okay, so you, you know, you have your curve that's something like this. All right, at P, there's a you know there's going to be like a line, a straight line. So I can I can show it from here. There'll be like a straight line that goes like this. Let me make it thinner. Okay, this straight line that touches at P. This is the tangent to the curve at P, and that's what we're trying to find. So to find the equation of a straight line, we need two things. We need the um, gradient of the line and we need a point on the line okay those two things are, are what we need all right so we have a point on the line we know the point p the point p is zero e minus two now the gradient of the line at this point is the gradient when x equals zero so we need to find dy dx when x equals zero because at, at p x is zero okay so first we find dy dx for the original function okay this is the answer that we have to come to in the end the gradient this is the the equation of the tangent this is the curve this is the equation of the curve why we can call it y equals e to the power of 3x plus 1 minus 2 or we can call it f of x if you want to that's fine and then we find f dash of x which is the same as dy dx so we can say f dash of x which is a gradient function is equal to when you differentiate e to the power of something it stays the same so it's e to the power of 3x plus 1 but then, because of the chain rule, we multiply by the differential of what's inside the function. So we're multiplying here by 3. The differential of 3x plus 1 is 3. And the minus 2 becomes 0 when you differentiate it. So we can say when x equals 0, you have f dash of 0 equals 3e to the power of um, th 1. Okay, therefore, the gradient of the tangent is equal to 3e. Okay, so we can say that the, grade, the equation of the tangent, you have y equals mx plus c, because we know we can see that the, the, the no, c is e minus 2. We know the y-intercept. This is the y-intercept. So it's easy for us to write the equation straight away using this, because we know the y-intercept is e minus 2. So we can say the equation is y equals 
3ex, 3ex plus c, which is e minus 2. And that's exactly what we had to show. That is exactly what we had to show. Right, so there's the answer for part c of this question. We found the tangent to the curve at p. Can now for part d, it says find to three significant figures the x coordinate of the point where the tangent to the curve at p meets the tangent to the curve at q. So we found the equation of the tangent to the curve at p, and we got to now find the tangent to the curve at q, which will be slightly different from that one, of course, and they'll meet somewhere over here. Okay, it's not very clear from that because I'll draw it over here actually. Um, say that's P and say Q is from here. Okay, I'll make it a bit thinner. Okay, say that's uh, where Q is. So the tangent to the curve at Q will be something like this. That's P. Okay, and Q might be something like this. So they're going to meet somewhere. Say Q is over here. So they'll meet somewhere. Over there, will meet somewhere. All right, so we need to find the equation of the tangent at Q. So we know about Q, we know its coordinates. Uh, we found that as lin 2 minus 1 over 3, 0. And we need to find the gradient of the tangent at Q. So we need to use f dash of x, okay, which is 3e to the power of 3x plus 1, which we found earlier. And we know that at this point q, x equals lin 2 minus 1 over 3. So we replace that instead of x, lin 2 minus 1 over 3, which gives us 3e to the power of 3 times lin of 2 minus 1 over 3 and then plus 1. Okay, so... Therefore, the gradient at Q is going to be given by 3e to the power of. Now, the 3 cancels with the 3. Gives you lin 2 minus 1 plus 1, which is just going to be lin 2. And we know that e to the power of lin 2 is 2. So, that's 3 times 2, which is 6. e to the power of lin of 2 is equal to 2. Why? Because these are inverse of each other. They cancel each other out. Like when you have f and composite with this inverse, they cancel each other out, leaving you with what's inside the function. So, it leaves you with 2. Okay, e to the power of lin of 2 is equal to 2. So that's 3 times 2, which is 6. So we know the gradient of the tangent at q is equal to 6. So the equation of the tangent y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. We can find now we have y minus the y value of q, which is 0, equals m, which is 6 times x minus the x value, which is lin 2, lin 2 minus 1 over 3. So we have y is equal to 6x. Now minus 6 times just gives you 2. So you have minus 2 times lin 2 minus 1. Okay, so that's the equation of the, this is the equation of the tangent at q. So we got to find where they intersect, where this line intersects with that line. Okay, where they, those two intersect. Okay, so what we can do is we can take the y and substitute this y instead of it as 3e x plus e minus 2 is equal to this 2 times, I'll just expand it, 2, two to minus 2 times lin 2 and minus 2 times minus 1 which is plus 2. So now we can bring the x's on one side because we need to find the coordinate of x. So we can bring the x's on one side and everything else to the other. So I have 3e x minus 6x equals, on this side I got 2 minus lin 2 i'm going to have minus e plus 2 so i'm i can take out x's common so i have here 3 e minus 6 equals and here i'm left with 2 plus 2 is 4 minus 2 lin 2 minus e so now i can say x equals 4 minus 2 lin 2 minus e over 3 e minus 6 and we want the answer to three significant figures so i need to find the value of this by taking my calculator and using these buttons um, so i've got my fraction four minus two lin two okay close that bracket minus e and the e button is over here alpha on that button there over three e so three times e and minus six 
Now that should produce the correct answer minus 0 0.04853 minus 0 0.04853. Okay, let's um, want to round it to 3SF, 307 and so on. So x is equal to 3SF minus 0 0.0485. So there's the x coordinate of the point of intersection between the two tangents. Um, and they only want the x coordinate, they don't want the y coordinate. So there's the answer. And that completes this question, which is uh, this question um, number six from the Solomon B paper and number 11 from the end of topic worksheet number one on differentiation. Um, other questions on this particular paper can be found in the playlist. Um, the like Solomon B paper can be found in the playlist over here. Other questions from this worksheet of differentiation one can be found in the playlist over here. Um, you can find questions dealing with differentiation in the playlist over here from P3 and exponentials and logarithms in the playlist over here. Um, from P3 and you can also click the card in the top of the screen like that shows up during the video to take you to a video that tells you how to use my channel efficiently. Thank you for watching and see you soon.